all, it's Melissa from DesignsByLittleBee.com. I've gotten quite a few messages over the past month or so asking me to do videos specifically on my multi-needle, like how to thread it, how to anchor and assign colors, etc. So I thought that would be easy enough to do. So right now I'm going to show you how to thread your multi-needle. That's from the very beginning and also how to continue with thread if you already have some in there. First, we're starting with a naked spool holder. So you're going to take your thread and place it on the spool. I'm going to break this video up into chunks, but I'm not going to do anything between the stops. I'm just going to readjust my camera so you can see better what I'm doing. I'm not going to do anything behind the scenes to trick you. This is very easy. Take the end of your thread, start from the back, and there's a hole directly above your spool of thread. Thread it from the back to the front through that hole in this metal. This metal right here. Okay? Then you'll see a plastic little intake uh, cylinder. Gosh, I guess I should have learned the words for all this, huh? You want to do your thread again from back to front. This is kind of tricky. Through that little cylinder. Okay? Then you've got another little cylinder down here. And thread your, pull your thread through that second little plastic um, intake cylinder. Now I'm going to readjust my camera so you can see the next section better. Okie dokie, Smokey. Now we've got our thread through that second plastic intake cylinder. And this part is really important, so I wanted to zoom in and show you exactly how you do this. If you look at the top of your machine, and if you're taller than I am, you can probably see this a lot better. This is like tippy-toe status for me. Um, if you look at the top of your machine, you can see raised uh, raised portions of, this, of the head of your machine where um, it's guiding you where to put your thread for each of your, of your spools, where they will go. For mine, mine's a six needle, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. They're all numbered, and you'll get used to these as you, as you go along. So I've got my thread threaded through this cylinder right here. Now you'll see right here there's a little metal plate, and I think this is a little tension knob, maybe. Sorry, I really should have looked up the names for these things. Um, but there's a little metal plate, and your thread needs to go under that metal plate from back to front, and it'll kind of snap. Listen, hear how it kind of snaps? If it's not threaded correctly from the back to the front, you'll get an error, and your machine will stop and tell you to, to check that out. So then just follow this guide. Like I said, if you're taller, you can probably see it. I have to stand on my tippy toes. There's a little metal knob right here. It tells me to go around that knob. Gotcha. Then you'll pull your thread around this knob once, all the way around. Still following the guide, I'm going back around this metal knob. And then there's another metal plate right here. And again, the thread needs to go from back to front. Snap securely under that metal plate. Now I will give you a pro tip. This is a Brother PR655. And when you're threading number four spool through here, and you get to this point right here where you're around this knob, this is number four, you need to go around that one twice. It goes, let's see, it goes do 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 do. Go around it twice, two times. If you do it once, you will get well, I don't know if you definitely will, but everybody I've ever talked to has gotten an error that the tension isn't right or the, the thread is, is not right. You have to go around number four twice. If you don't do that you'll if, and you get an error, you'll go to an embroidery group on Facebook and they'll all say, yep, go twice around number four, only number four, okay? So don't forget that. Now I'm going to readjust my camera and show you the last step in getting that, that one spool threaded. If you're familiar with sewing machines, then this part is a lot like threading a sewing machine. You have all these lines that correspond to your different, uh, your separate needles, and they have a metal arm, like a, an, a um, that goes up and down as it sews, just like your sewing machine. So you take it straight from the metal plate that you put it under, straight down, and it's going into this space. You've got down here on your, pla if you look on the plas the ends of these plastic pieces, you'll see a little arrow that's still trying to help guide you. Go up. And remember to keep your um, thread taut as you're doing this. 
and you're gonna go through that little metal arm through the hole in there see it's just like a sewing machine so you just went down up thread down okay and then you'll see down here and I think you can barely see it down there there's another metal plate and there's holes one of them corresponds to this number three so I'm going to thread it through that hole I think you can barely see that if I'm looking at it right right there I went straight down through that hole and one more time let's readjust so that I can show you threading it but threading it is the easy part because the machine does that for you so I'm gonna readjust my camera and I'll be right back now we're at the easiest part which is threading the needle and it's super easy because your machine does it for you if you use a sewing machine regularly this is a lot like that very easy what you're gonna do go up here to your machine screen and hit this button down here this is like your needle hoop kind of adjustment uh, screen make sure you're on the right number thread I'm on three so that's good go down here to your needle pull your needle down and you'll see a little metal arm that wants to grab onto your thread you've got to push your thread behind the end of that arm and pull forward like takes takes a little finesse sometimes Boop. okay and now you'll see that I mean you can see that really well in that you see that little metal arm and so my thread is going through a little crook okay now go back up to your machine and push this button needle threader button it looks like a needle going through a thread super easy to remember come back down here and you will see your machine has your little guides for your thread there's one pointing out at you wrap them around that then there's one pointing kind of down wrap it up around that and bring your thread up here to your plastic guide right above number three and you'll see right there there's a there's an arrow right there see that arrow so what I'm doing is I bring my thread up and I wrap it around and there's a little razor in there and it goes cut go back up here to your machine push that threader button again and watch what it does oh <gasps> ta-da your machine is threaded wasn't that magical now the next step is if you already have thread in here how do you change the thread quickly and easily without having to do all of that? Because that was a lot of work and you don't want to do that every time. All right, so let's change the thread. Let's say I don't want this pink anymore. I want this maroon. This part is so easy. If you blink, you might miss it. First, simply remove the color that you don't want to use. In this case, pink. Snip off. Not too close to the top, but just leave a little thread dangling. Take your end of your pink thread and the beginning of your fresh thread, which in my case is a beautiful crimson color. Take the ends of them together and tie a knot. Pull it nice and tight. Okay. Prepare to have your mind blown. This is amazing. Okay, so now I've got my knot hanging. I'm going to come back over to my machine. Reach down remember I'm on number five so find your color that you're doing reach down and grab the thread right in front of your needle and you're basically just unthreading the needle which is fine because a knot can't go through the needle anyway right and pull <laughs> pull 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 you see what I did there let's get closer so you can make sure to make sure you see it you see how the thread is going in front of each needle I just grabbed the thread that was in front of number five and just pulled. Just pull. That's it. So now you've got your fresh color and I can see that my crimson is the one that's down here now. Guess what I do now? Make sure I'm on needle number five and hit my needle threader button and thread. That's it. It's that easy. Replace your thread color, tie a knot, grab the thread from in front of the needle pull until you see your fresh color 
hit the needle threader and thread it. That's it. It's that easy to change colors. Now I would like to quickly talk about anchoring colors and selecting colors easily using the six choices that you have in your machine. What's the benefit of using a six needle machine if you have to keep stopping and assigning colors and changing colors, etc.? Uh, anchoring colors is something I didn't get until I had my machine for a couple of months. So hopefully this helps somebody out when you first get your machine so you don't have to guess and wonder for a couple of months like I did. First, I'm going to go, I have my computer um, hooked to my machine, so I'm just going to go in and find the design I want to do. It's a Mama Bear applique. I'm going to hit select. I'm going to hit rotate to the left, uh, close. Now I'm going to assign the colors. I'm going to go in here to this, it looks like a thread talking to you, like a spool of thread with colors, that button. And it's showing my steps, one through four. The first one, it's an applique, so it's going to be the placement. And I'm going to do, let's see, let's say I want to do the bear in um, ivory, and I want to do the words mama and bear in my crimson color. So for the first step, I'm going to say, it says cream yellow, but I use it like ivory. You can use whatever colors you want. Uh, advance to the next step. That's going to be your tack down, ivory. Next step, uh, satin stitch, ivory. And the last step says black. I want to use, it says red, but I'm using it as crimson. So it whatever you say in your head it is, that's what it is. Okay, so that's how my design's going to look. Great, that's perfect. So I'm going to go to close. Now, if you just start sewing right now, your machine doesn't know which needle is red, which needle is ivory, which needle is green, blue, whatever colors you assigned. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down here to what looks like a checklist. And I'm going to go scroll over to my reserved needle screen. This is where you assign your colors or anchor your colors. You'll see when you anchor them, they have a little anchor next to the color. So I'm going to use ivory and crimson or red for this design, right? So I want my machine to know which one is ivory and to know which one is crimson. I don't want to come in here and mess with this. That's the fun of having a multi-needle. I don't have to mess with, with all the colors anymore. So I'm going to go in here and you've got to tell your machine which one is ivory and which one is crimson or red. So I'm going to go to number four. I can see at the top of my machine that I do have ivory in number four place. Let me show you. I do have ivory right there, and I do have crimson right there. So let's do four ivory, five crimson. Okay, so four, hit cream yellow, or what I'm calling ivory, and hit set. Now did you see that anchor popped up right there? Now your machine knows that that is ivory, cream yellow, whatever it's called. It. This is ivory. Every time you tell your machine to stitch ivory, it will go to number four. Let's go to number five. Hit reset. If it's got an anchor by it, well, that's not right. Reset. Hit red or crimson. And hit set. There's my anchor. Now, a note, you can only do five of these. You can't anchor all six. It has to have one one color, just like a, a miscellaneous color. But you can do five. You can do one, two, three, four, or five. And now your machine knows. My I always have number one is white and number six is black. I always do that because I use those so often. And then now my machine knows that number five is red, or that's what I'm calling my crimson color, and number four is ivory. So when I go to close, when I go to edit end, and then I figure out where I want my design to stitch, when I hit sewing, that magical button, check out what it did. It says cream yellow four, cream yellow four, cream yellow four, red five. Perfect. So now theoretically on what I'm stitching, if I'm stitching a t-shirt or something and I hoop it and let's say I have to run upstairs and get a soda or one of my kids is crying or the dog is barking, I can theoretically here walk away and it will stitch all those colors just as they are. And that is what is meant by anchoring. And now my machine knows what to do. It doesn't have to be told. That's one of the big benefits of using a multi-needle is that you don't have to stand around and watch it and say, okay, now do blue. Okay, now do green, red, whatever, is anchoring colors and the ability to just let your machine do its job. And you can sit on the side and 
have a bowl of cereal or do, do whatever while it does its thing. You can see more great tutorials on embroidery by subscribing to my YouTube channel. Hit that red button right on there that says subscribe. You can visit my website, designsbylittlebead.com, which can direct you to my blog and where you can shop for some great embroidery designs, see some YouTube videos, or visit my Facebook group. Lots of fun stuff going on there all the time. Hope this tutorial was helpful to you. And as always, I will chat with you in the group and see you next time. Bye.